You know, whenever we have a child that starts early in life with a sports game, somebody like, oh, Steph Curry or Manny Pacquiao, or any other sports legend, uh, for me, for example, Joe, uh, Bill Walsh, Jerry Rice, and Joe Montana are my ideals of a 49er since they were the first, my, my first exposure to the 49ers and the world of sports. I wouldn't doubt that these athletes started their training very early on in their career. I mean, we see parents today, for example, starting off their kids as young as three or four years old in order to train them with how to um, swing a bat, catch a ball, or swim 50 yards. If this is true for us who are earthly parents, if this is true for us who are godparents, where we care about our children enough to give them the good things in life, train them well, start them young, then how much more true is it for those of us involved in the spiritual formation of our children and our godchildren? We start them as young as possible. And that's what we're doing here uh, through the sacrament of baptism. Uh, for those of you who are movie fans, whether it's Star Wars or the Avengers, um, you and I know that uh, you and I know that. Um, oh, hold on. For those of you who are movie fans, like the Avengers or Star Wars, you and I know that in the storyline, every superhero. Every character in the movie has some type of story. And this is all the more true for us who are gathered today. There is a story for each of these babies that will be baptized. And the story of salvation isn't just for somebody like Matt Pacquiao or Seth Curry or Jerry Rice. The story of salvation for these athletes, when they started, incorporates their entire lives. We have to know the story. Okay, so in the Star Wars storyline, you need to know the story about the Skywalkers and the Dark Vader and Death Star and, and the whole story of that saga. You need to know the story of how Captain America got started as a little bit of a guy. Then you have to came from home with the kids. Seth Curry came from home with the kids. Well, the story of salvation isn't just for their earthly story. The story of salvation is all of God's people. All of you and I who are baptized. Okay, so at the beginning of the time, God created the world to be perfect already. It wasn't meant to be the way it is now all screwed up. The world was meant to be paradise. But our first parents, they screwed up. And when they screwed up, God condemned the whole world. All humanity suffered because of their choice. And they they had the first original sin, the first, the first evil into the world. And God said, No, you cannot go to heaven anymore. And at the same time, God created the angels to be perfect. But a third of them fell, beginning with Lucifer, who became the devil. And so, angels and human beings, we rebelled against God. But what's different in the story of salvation is that God decides to save the human race for some reason. We call this his love. And so all the Old Testament was meant to prepare the way for his son. And his son came 2,000 years ago in the person of Christ Jesus. And when he became flesh, he became one of us, just like that song by Ben Miller, but God was one of us. God was.
establishes the Holy Catholic Church. He gives us the seven sacraments. He is crucified. He has died for our sins. And then he is risen. This story doesn't end there 2,000 years ago. Because the question is now for you, these babies, for those of us who may not be of the Christian faith, this invitation is for you as well. For Jesus says, follow me. I'm the way to the Father. I'm the way home to God from heaven. And then the church continues for 2,000 years. And here we are right now, 2019, expecting the second coming of Jesus at the end of time. And that, the brothers and sisters, I just summarized the Bible in five minutes of preaching. That is the story of salvation. And these babies are going to be part of that story. We saw from the Gospel, Matthew chapter 28, before Jesus ascends to heaven, he says, All authority in heaven has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to so all my commandments. And know that I am with you. I am with you always through everything that you're going to go through until the end of the world. And so we are doing the great commission. We are following what Jesus asked us when you and I baptize these babies. When you got parents, you remember the class we were asked every day about her. When you, as God parents, help these parents to live their Christian life. And so, um, these children are going to be removed of not just that original sin that Adam and Eve had at the beginning of time, but these children will also be infused with grace and love and faith and hope. As we see in the reading from the letter of Peter, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people set apart. Out of baptism, the ritual of the Catholic Church is to anoint you with sacred Christmas. It smells so good. Why? Because they are princes and princesses of the kingdom. They're going to be an adopted son of the Father who is love. 
his cell on said dad. And you're still holding his hand. Mother is Jesus. Thank you. 